On October 5th, Microsoft released their latest operating system, Windows 11. It's supposed to be faster, better looking, and most importantly, it offers a lot of new features that I wanted to check out. Unfortunately, none of my machines were compatible based on the information that came back from their compatibility checker, but that's okay. I found a way to get around it. It's easy, it's fun, and most importantly, I was able to install it on machines all the way down to the seven-year-old Surface Pro, the original Surface from Microsoft. Let's go. So the first thing you're going to need to update your system to the latest Windows 11 is you're going to need a USB drive, like this one right here. I recommend something that's eight to 16 gigabytes because you're going to need to download the files necessary from Windows' own website. You're also going to need to go to the Windows 11 website and download their media creation tool. This will create a custom version of the operating system that's based on the machine that you're upgrading so that you can have the best possible compatibility when you do the move. The other thing that you're also going to need to do is you're going to need to make sure that you actually sign in to your Windows account without doing that, you won't be able to register the key on the Windows website so that you can seamlessly go from 10 to 11. Now keep in mind, you won't be able to upgrade to a higher version of the operating system. So if you're on Windows 10 Home, you're going to go to Windows 11 Home. So what that means is that this won't work if you're on Windows 7 or Windows 8. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to download that tool. I'm going to create the key. So I'm gonna run the tool and I'm gonna stick this USB drive into the laptop so that it has a location to install those files. It might take a little while depending on your configuration or your machine specs. So you might wanna take lunch. Let's go. So that was a good lunch and it looks like the USB drive is prepared. Now, let me show you what happens when you try to run Windows 11 update without some of the fixes that I'm going to show you. So we're gonna hit the finish button to get out of this screen here. Now we're gonna hit uh, File Explorer and we're gonna look at the drive that we just created. In this case, it's called ED USB. I don't know why that is, but there it is. And inside you'll see all the files for your Windows 11 installation and update. So I'm gonna hit the setup button and I'm gonna show you exactly what happens with a raw install. So now it's asking me to install Windows 11. Okay, great. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, there is an option to ask if you want to make the installation better. I'm not gonna check that because it's not checked by default. All right, let's hit next. So it's going to go ahead and check for updates on the operating system, kind of as a preemptive measure to make sure that your installation is completely up to date based on your system specifications. We've already done the, uh, the work recently, so it shouldn't take that long. So it's already downloaded all the updates. It's about to restart the installation process um, to get to the point where you can actually start the install and we'll see what happens there. So as you can see, it errored out on the exact same error that the compatibility tool found, which is the processor itself is not compatible. Normally you get a combination of the CPU and the TPM chip being missing or not available. In this case, it recognized that the processor was not compatible even though the TPM chip was installed. And that's one of the requirements of Windows 11 moving forward. So. Since we can't move forward, we're going to close the screen and I'm gonna show you what you need to do to this installation to make it run. So as you can see, Windows 11, not happy. Not going to install it on this particular machine because of the CPU limitation. It's not compatible according to Windows. Well, that's okay. What we're gonna do is we're going to open that same drive up and I've already got it on the screen here. I'm gonna to go to the sources folder, which is right in the middle here. I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna look for a file that's called appraiser res, not appraise, appraiser res. And it's this file right here. I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna make a copy of that. And that one's down here. As you can see, I'm going to rename this version as my backup copy. So I'm just going to remove the copy part and I'm gonna put .bak on the back so that I have an original copy of the file in case anything goes wrong. I'm going to go back to the original copy, which is somewhere up here. 
and I'm gonna make some changes to the actual file itself. What you're going to want to do is going to want to right click on it, you know, want to select open with, and you're going to want to choose notepad. There's some code at the top there that you do not want to touch. All you're going to do is you're going to remove any line that has to do with TPM. So the, the easiest way to do that is just use the find tool, TPM. I'm going to start looking for those instances. Look at that. And I'm just going to start taking those, those code lines and I'm just gonna start deleting them like that. You could also comment them out if you want, but this is just a cleaner way for me to just get everything out of there. Now, having said that, this could take a while. So if you want the shortcut, I actually found out that a YouTube channel called Tips to Fix, they actually have a great tutorial that runs through this exact same process in a video, but they've also have a version of the file that's available on their blog. So you can download it from there. Now keep in mind, anything that you download from the internet, make sure that you scan it with a virus scanner of any kind. I did go and download the file and I looked through it and there wasn't anything to me that was not above board. So it seems like a safe bet. I also scanned the file itself as well too. And the YouTuber that's behind the channel and the blog seems like a very respected member in the community. So uh, make sure that you give him a thumbs up and like his channel as well too. We'll have the link up here somewhere so that you can visit him for more tips like this. Okay, so I've done it the hard way. I've given you a chance to do it the easy way. And now I've got a version of the file that is ready to go in the folder. All I have to do is just hit setup again, and it should sail through the setup, no problem this time around. And there we are. So this time, when it was checking for PC compatibility requirements, uh, it went all the way through. Last time it stopped us and said, my CPU was not compatible. This time it went all the way through to the license terms, which means that we are on our way. I'm going to accept the license terms and the next step after this is you can choose how to install your update. So there's a couple options here and it's uh, going to be either A, you keep all of your data, you keep all of your uh, Windows apps, but it will remove everything else. So if you have Adobe Suite installed, if you have any other editing software, Microsoft Office, uh, it may remove most of that and you will have to reinstall it, but it will keep everything else that's in your My Documents folder or anything that's backed up to your OneDrive. The second option is to actually completely remove everything. So you basically start from a brand new machine from day one, it's probably the best way to install an operating system because it doesn't drag any baggage along with it, but that's only if you want to spend a little bit more time to configure everything out. Personally, I think that just doing uh, it the, the first way where you keep all the settings, keep most of your apps uh, there in the operating system is perfectly fine. It's going to reinstall the entire operating system anyway. It's gonna pack up Windows 10, it's gonna put it in its own folder and it's gonna do, uh, it's gonna give you a great experience overall. This is the way that I updated both of my laptops because I wanted to get going right away and just have to install a minimal amount of software to get rolling again. So for most people, I would recommend that. For someone that has an, the, an older system that you know it's time for it to have a quick uh, washing, then I would do the second option. All right, now that we've gone through the entire gauntlet of compatibility checks and updates and everything like that as you saw on the screens previous, we're ready to choose how we want this installation to go. Now, an in-place upgrade, typically you would basically keep your personal files and apps and everything would be hunky-dory. Now, you may run into situations where things like uh, Adobe Creative Suite or um, you know, like DaVinci Resolve or any other games or whatnot, they might not stay behind. You might have to reinstall them, but this first option right here on the screen to keep personal files and apps will mainly keep your Windows uh, operating system apps intact, your settings so that when you log on, that Windows experience should be more or less the same as the other one in terms of the settings that you've chosen. The second option to keep personal files only will only do just that. It'll nuke all of the applications out of your application install screen. It'll start from completely new, 
That's actually not a bad way to go. I think that that probably would be the most economical in terms of time because you don't have to remember the password on how you log into your Windows uh, operating system or your uh, Windows account. Now keep in mind, at this stage here, before you take another step, you should log into your Windows account on Microsoft because if you don't register this key there, when you hit the next step, when you start installing the operating system, it won't know that you have a valid key. It may ask you for it and you might not have it available. By registering it electronically, when you sign into that account, it'll immediately know that this machine is a Windows 10 machine. It will grab the key from that and it will upgrade you, no problems. Now, finally, the last option is the nuclear option. Nothing will be saved. You basically start from scratch. If you have nothing to lose on the machine, I recommend this because this is the cleanest possible way to install your entire operating system and get back as much performance as possible. I'm gonna go with the third option. All right, here's the moment of truth. We've gone through the installation options. We're at the ready to install sign. Just to recap, we're installing Windows 11 Pro Education. This is the existing version of the Windows 10 operating system. We're just upgrading to 11, same version of the operating system, okay? So you're not going to immediately get an upgrade from Windows Home 10 to Windows 11 Pro. Doesn't work that way, okay? Uh, we've also chose to keep nothing. So we're going to completely obliterate what's on here. This is the nuclear option. If you give you a fresh brand new system where it's like factory new. Okay, I'm gonna hit the install button and let's see what happens. Now keep in mind, this might take a little while. So this might be a good time to step up for another coffee, lunch, or maybe even dinner. So as with any lab experiment, it's great to, you know, really enjoy the results of that experiment. And we've got a Windows 11 laptop now. Check this out. It, this Lenovo, which was a $200 special, which came with Windows 10 Pro Education. Uh, it's now upgraded to Windows 11 here. We're now at the start screen, which a lot of people know about when they get a brand new laptop. It's asking me for the language. And I'm about to pull the USB drive off here signaling the end of our installation. So why don't I go ahead and hit the OK button for you. And there we are. It's gonna go through the setup process. It's gonna ask me for my name, the date, and everything like that. And to be perfectly honest, I, I think this has been a great success. Now one caveat is that this particular laptop, even though it is uh, a well-spec laptop with an AMD processor, the storage was a little bit slow on board, which means that uh, when we installed it, it took a lot longer than some of our higher end older systems. So keep that in mind is that if you have an older system and you wanna tempt this, that you should have very fast storage on board so that you get a very fast installation. So if you're waiting for a while and you've got slower storage on it, an older hard drive or something like that, just keep that in mind. Look at that. So after a couple of coffees, lunch, maybe dinner, We've got Windows 11 on a machine that Microsoft rejected. This machine is now running Windows 11. Check that out. It's got the center punch um, taskbar and, and tool tray and everything like that. It's got all the latest features from Windows 11 and it is running on this machine. Is it faster? We're gonna have to find out over the next couple of weeks. But I think that based on my experience with upgrading a Surface Pro, I think we're in good shape here. I think this is going to be a great experience. So we're gonna hand this over to John, who this laptop belongs to, and he's going to you know, get back to us over the next couple of weeks to see what his experience is. So if you like this video and you like what we just did here, or you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Also, thank you so much for supporting our channel. We're on our way to 50,000 subscribers and it's all because of you. And I hope that we can uh, reach 100,000 with you as well too. Take care everyone and uh, hopefully this helps someone out there.